Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this tutorial, we're gonna revisit an old tutorial of mine where we created some hanging lights. But this time we're gonna do it with Blender 3.0 using the new Fields workflow. So let's get into it. All right, for this one, I'm gonna be using Blender 3.0. You can download it at blender.org. This is the newest stable release. To start with, I'm gonna delete my default cube and add a ground plane. And now we have a place to work. I'm gonna pull up this bottom window and I'm gonna change it to an asset browser because I wanna pull in an object that I've already created. I've made a simple pavilion and this is what we're gonna to use to hang our lighting from. I'll make this pavilion file available for download. Check the description below for a link. Next, I'll close the asset browser. I'm gonna start my light strands by adding a curve. I'll go into top view and put it in wireframe mode. I'll add a bezier curve and stick one of the control points over here under the rafters. I'm gonna move it up so it's just under the roof rafters right there. I'll take this second point and move it up as well. Now this part is really up to you as far as how you want your lights to be. Just extend your curve and place each point at where you want your lights to connect to your pavilion. Now that I've got this basic shape, I'm gonna put this spline in vector mode. So from edit mode, I'll select all my points and press V and then choose vector. You can also do this just by pressing V twice. So now you see there's a direct line from each of my connection points. Now I'm gonna to go to my geometry nodes tab. I'm gonna select my pavilion and press H to hide it for now. So now it's much easier to see my curve. I'll select my curve and press new to create a new geometry node tree for it. We're going to want each of these segments to droop a bit. We can do that with just a couple of quick nodes. The first node we want to add is a set handle type node. We're going to set both the left and the right handles to vector. So while we already did this in edit mode, this will make sure that our spline always has vector type handles. The next thing we want to do is pull the handles down. If I were to add just a regular bezier curve like this, press V twice and grab these inside handles and move them downward, you see you get this drooping cable effect. That's what we want to do with our node tree. To do that, we'll use a set handle position node. Now, as I've explained in other videos, the set handle position node can only do left and right one at a time. It can't do both at the same time like the set handle type. And that's just a limitation of the way curve handles work. So I'm going to duplicate this set handle position node and set it to right. Now what we want to do is take the handles current position and just move them downward on the Z axis. So I'm going to add a curve input node of curve handle positions. I'll attach the left to the left and the right to the right. Because the set handle position nodes position socket gets the handles position implicitly, connecting them explicitly like this doesn't change anything. The next thing we wanna do is add a vector math node to each one of these so that we can change the vector slightly. We wanna set them to subtract mode, and now we wanna add a node for the vector we'd like to subtract. So we'll go to input, vector, and plug this into the vector socket for the subtract node. As you increase the Z, you'll see that your cables droop. You can have those droop as much or as little as you like. I'm going to press Alt-H so I can see my pavilion again. So there you can see I've got the beginnings of some nice droopy cables. Before I go too far, I want to keep this node tree pretty clean. So I'm going to group together these nodes that combine to change my original curve into droopy curves. I'll select all these middle nodes but I'm gonna deselect this vector by shift clicking on it. And you'll see why momentarily. With these six nodes selected, I'm gonna press Control G to group them. With a little bit of cleanup, this group has become my droopiness group. You do notice that it's separated these two vectors into different input sockets. So I'm gonna connect them to the same socket, bring up my end panel, choose group, and remove the bottom vector input from my group input. I'm also gonna change the name to droopiness. 
Now if I press the up arrow, I'll go back to my parent node tree. And I'm going to change the name of this node group to Droop. If I like, I can actually delete this vector node, and I have my droopiness as just an input here on my Droop node. So now with one node, I can change a Bezier curve into drooping curves. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and solidify these wires. That's pretty simple. All I'm going to do is add a curve, curve to mesh node, then a curve primitive circle node. I'll reduce the radius until I get the size that I'd like. That's good for now. Again, I'm going to highlight these two nodes, press control G. There's nothing I need to change here. So I'll press my up arrow and change this node group to curve solidify. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now we'd like to add some light bulbs to our wire. The light bulbs will obviously want to follow the droopiness of the wires. So this is going to come after the droop node. I'm going to add an instance on points node. I'm going to plug my droopy curve into the points. This means that my curve is providing the locations for where I want to instance my lights. I'm also going to need to join this in with my solidified wires. So I'll add a geometry join geometry node. Now I'm ready to add what I want for instances. For this example, I'm just going to do something simple. So I'll add a mesh primitive icosphere and plug that into my instances. Of course, they're really big to start with. So I'm going to reduce the radius. I'm going to increase the subdivisions and I also want them to come down a little bit. So before I instance my icosphere, I'm going to move all of its points down on the Z axis. I'm going to do that with a geometry transform node. And I'll simply lower the Z translation. Now to keep this clean, I'm going to select these three nodes and group them with control G. I'll go up to my parent node and name this one light instances. Now you'll notice that the lights were only added at the control points of my curve because that's what happens when you use a curve object directly as points. So I'm going to want to do something to my curve here to increase the number of points on it. If I go to my curve menu, you'll see a curve to points node. I'm going to drop that before the light instances. There's a couple of ways you can determine how many lights are going to be on your strand. The first is just a count. So if you wanted, say, 100 lights on this strand, you could do that. Or if you wanted a specific distance between them, you could say length. The longer the length, the longer the space in between each light. The shorter the length, the shorter. That looks good for now. So now that we've got a thickened cable and some lights on our strand, we can go ahead and add some materials. On my curve object, I'll go to my materials tab and click new. The first material will be for our wire. We're just going to use a simple dark black texture, nothing special. I'm going to add another material slot and click new. This one is going to be our light. I'm going to jump over to the shading menu and for my lights, I'm going to add a converter black body node and plug this into the emission color. I'm going to set these lights to 2600 Kelvin to start with, and I'll change the emission strength to 50. Going back to my geometry nodes, I'm going to add a material set material node and put one on each of these lines. For the wire, I'll choose wire and for the lights, I'll choose light. I'll make sure my render engine is set to cycles and go into rendered mode. I'm going to delete my light and also turn off my world light. From here, I can tinker with my settings. I can change the length between my light bulbs. I can change the droopiness. I could even grab the end of one of my original curves and add more lights. If I want more control of over, say, the size of my lights, I could open up my light instances group by clicking on it and hitting tab and dragging the radius of my icosphere to my group input. I'll name that light size. And now if I go back to my master tree, you'll see that I have light size here on my light instances. If I wanted to shrink that down, I could have much smaller lights. 
or enormous lights if I really wanted to. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and I hope it's a practical use of geometry nodes that you could integrate into one of your projects. So as always, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome, and I'm really glad you stuck around. Thanks for watching the channel. If you enjoyed the video, press like and consider subscribing to the channel. So until next time, I'll catch you later.